Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family and a blessed Lent to you all. And we know what a privilege it is for us to be in your home. Now, we want to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Today, we have a lovely guest. Her name is Karen May, and she is the author of a book called Walking Through Holy Week. You could go to her website. It's amazinggraces.com. And I'm excited to get everyone ready as we're taking this Lenten journey in ways that hopefully we people prepared even before the Lenten journey started yep. um, in ways that they were going to participate. Uh, their interior journey, uh, more of Jesus, less of us in with fasting and prayer and almsgiving and in ways that we were going to do that as a people of God. And now Karen brings to us how to do Holy Week yeah. and a beautiful way of taking that journey, intimate encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of and Lords. We shared earlier in the week about our getting some retreat time. And this book, Walking Through Holy Week, was one of our mm -hmm. sources for our time away, a journey into the story of Easter. And you mentioned almsgiving and prayer and fasting and there could be study and there's so many different things to do. I'm really touched by what it says here, walking through Holy Week, a journey. Mm -hmm. And so here's an emphasis. I mean, there's multiple aspects and whatever God's doing in your life, he wants to emphasize is, is fine. Uh, but walking with Jesus, walking, journeying. Mm -hmm. So it's very intimate, very personal. You're there. And, and uh, she, does, uh, she does Holy Week itself, Palm Sunday. Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday, mm -hmm. Good Friday, Holy Saturday, the vigil, East in, into Easter. This whole Jesus being being the, the Passover himself. Um, and uh, as I've been trying to be in the scene and, and thinking about this, because she does that kind of Ignatian yes. way of spirituality, place yourself in there, who are you, what's happening? I just keep thinking that the apostles may have been saying things like, where's he going now? Mm -hmm. Where are we going now? What is he going to say next? What is he saying now? Can't believe he just said that. Mm -hmm. Not me, or am I in this one? You know, and so you're really there with him, walking with him, journeying with him through incredible things of, of rejection and betrayal and suffering and sorrow and loss and sadness and grief, as we shared on Monday. Mm -hmm. but, but through, through to the resurrection, through to the conquering of sin and death, and the world and the flesh. Right, that we then would be a people that not dwell in the darkness, but that we would encounter the light, be in the light, be a people of the light. Um, even as we pray our rosary, right? Our, all of our rosaries, Monday through Sunday, take us through the beautiful journey of that intimate counter, putting yeah. ourselves in that scene and, and being with Jesus and, yeah. and all that suffering and all of that love and all of those sorrows and all of that joy. And the Stations of the Cross. And the Stations and of the Cross. And Karen May does a great job with the Stations of the Cross. So walking through Holy Week, we'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. We're preparing for... The season of Lent, Easter, right on, right on into Easter. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy and a blessed Lent to you. We bring to you today Karen May, who's the author of a book, a beautiful book called Walking Through Holy Week. You can go to her website. It's amazinggraces.com. Well, Karen, we want to welcome you to At Home. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much. And, but first, we want you to tell our family a little bit about Karen, mm -hmm. um, where you were born and raised, and, mm -hmm. and then tell us when you're done with that little snippet of you, 
how you came to write this book, this beautiful book, mm -hmm. and how it's going to enrich our, our journey. Okay, so I was born in Chicago, actually, and left pretty early, went to Dallas when I was 10. So I've lived in Texas the rest of my life and now live in Austin with my husband. And we have four children, uh, two of which are still at home, two are out of the house, and one is actually getting married the end of this month. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. expanding our family, and we have four girls, so we're finally going to get that boy. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Fun. which is exciting and a part of my journey really to this book has been in teaching my children the faith and in my husband's journey to faith because when we were married he was an atheist and he would come to church with me and we'd have discussions and conversations and he's an engineer and wanted to know all the details mm -hmm. and I had to explain them which meant I had to figure out what they were mm -hmm. And so as I explained them, as I figured out more about what my faith was, the more I fell in love with it and the more that I could see the beauty in all of the things that I was teaching to my husband and to my children. Uh, end of the story is he became Catholic about 15 years ago and is involved in the church and really excited to be teaching our children as well. Mm -hmm. And when he came into the church and converted on Holy Saturday, that mass was so special mm -hmm. and so important. And all of the days leading up to it, I had discovered that the story was really being told in a way that it pulled us in, that we were part of it, as opposed to Sunday mass where, yes, we're a part of it. On Palm Sunday, we have palms. On Holy Thursday, our feet are washed. So we're actively doing things that bring us into the story and as I told people that, when I was an RCI sponsor or had people who had never gone, they would get to that Holy Saturday waiting to get into, into the church with tears. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what's just happened. I want in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had to write this book because there's only one of me. I can only tell so many people at a time. Right. And I wanted to be able to tell people the richness and the depth mm -hmm. and the ways that we're drawn into this story because when you sit at the Last Supper and when you go to the foot of the cross and when you're in the garden in Jesus' agony, when you finally stand at that empty tomb, you are ready for Easter in a way you've never been ready before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's beautifully said. Mm -hmm. With your husband, you said he's an engineer, many, many questions. You had to learn right. your faith more deeply. Mm -hmm. um, where, did, where did it come to for him that he finally crossed that line and came in? Where did encou encounter, mm -hmm. love, as well as questions? Did that all happen for him? How did that happen? It did. So he would question me all the time, and you know, I didn't. I kept telling him, "Go find somebody who knows these answers," mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but he wouldn't. And finally, my faith really had this beautiful awakening, and he realized he had to go really figure this out. And we had a retreat at our church that he went to, and as he was leaving, he was nervous because he said to me what are they going to do when they find out I don't believe? Mm. Well, most of them already knew. And so I told him what I knew was that they would love him. And he went and returned and he said, I've seen the Holy Spirit. I don't know what that means. I've seen it. And when they found out that I didn't believe and he teared up, he said they loved me. Mm. And so he saw it and he felt it. Yeah. And from there, these men helped him in his questions to realize that some of his questions were getting in the way yeah. of his relationship, in the way of his understanding. Mm -hmm. He was so concerned about these details that he was missing yeah. the picture. Right. And he just saw the grace in the life that they were living and said, I, I want that. Yeah. I want Christ And in my how life. beautiful for that to be revealed to him in the group of other men. Yes. You know, because men and women, we think different, especially mm -hmm. if you're married to an engineer. Right. I mean, it's, <laughs> they have a different brains. They're just wired differently. Mm -hmm. And um, But to come to a place of love and trust and faith and that he saw with other men, it was like, you know, at some point I just got to say, I'm all in. Right. Right. And right. I just got to make that jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not that we didn't have a loving family. Mm -hmm. But there was just a difference, just a richness that was in it that he wanted. And as soon as he could get past mm -hmm. the things that really didn't matter, like does yeah. it matter what word comes first in right. this prayer? Mm -hmm. Not really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What matters is what you're saying in that prayer. Yeah. Yeah. What matters is how Jesus is becoming a part of your life and filling your life and leading you to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so all of those things kind of came into order. Yeah. And now he's 
you know, we're, we're there all the time. Mm -hmm. He's making sure we're getting there. He's making sure we're doing things. You know, he is, he is a spiritual leader in our family. Mm -hmm. so it's just happy. beautiful. So That's happy beautiful. For you mm -hmm. both. Now, walking through Holy Week, I mean, you really kind of take us there through those mm -hmm. days. Um, Palm Sunday and the right. triumphal entry and to crucifixion, right? Palm Sunday and then Monday, Thursday, I call it Mandatin Day. Mm -hmm. This commandment I give to you, Holy mm -hmm. Thursday, Good Friday on to the Easter Vigil, Holy Saturday. And a lot of your teaching helps to place us you know, in those places, in those scenes. But you shared with me, mm -hmm. with us before the show, that you've recently been to Jerusalem. And I said to you, oh boy, you're gonna rewrite the book or what right. are you gonna do? But you had an interesting perspective on that. You were saying, well, I, I, I was there so many times this way, but then I was there physically. Right. Right. Share with us about all of that. Right. So I've been, the way that I experience kind of anything, a movie or a book or scripture, is that I put myself into the action, into the story, and which is a very Ignatian approach. And so as I've been writing this and speaking about it and sharing it with people, I've very much been immersed in the story. And so emotionally, th uh, mentally, spiritually, I've been in all of these places. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So as I went just a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. I was standing in the courtyard where Peter denied Jesus. And, and I thought, I've, I've been here. I, this is so familiar. And I've walked these streets. I've been in these places. But then to be there in itself, just put all these pieces together. Like I had all the pieces, I had all the connections, but then to be there and see, here's where Jesus stood, wow. here's where he walked down mm -hmm. and went to the Last Supper. And he walked right next to that courtyard where Peter denied mm -hmm. him and where he would be in just a few hours yeah. to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. And you have to wonder, or I did, like did he walk by there and say, I'll mm -hmm. be back. Mm -hmm. Like he was walking, like he never, wavered, you know, I'll be back. I know I'm going to yeah. be here and I'm still going to go forward. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the inspirational part of all of this Holy Week. And the reason that I like to have Holy Week in my sights during Lent, like all of our sacrifices, all of our journey is yeah. to the same place. Mm -hmm. We're giving up. We know that there will be difficulty. We know that there will be suffering, yes. but we know that there will be resurrection. We know there will be transformation. Okay. Well, tell us how the book is laid out you've got six chapters mm -hmm. and so and that's, there are six that's weeks in holy week or in lent mm -hmm. six weeks in lent so you could do a chapter a week and what i love about the book so it goes through the masses so you have the old testament reading the new testament reading the gospel and some of the activities and you include all those mm -hmm. i include mm -hmm. all of those and reflections on them and questions so you could do a chapter a week and do it by yourself or with a group and kind of discuss the things that stood out to you or some of the discussion questions are, yeah, are good. good for mm -hmm. that. And, or you could even do just a section a day. I'm gonna do the Old Testament section and then I'm, tomorrow I'm gonna do the Psalm mm -hmm. and tomorrow I'm gonna do the New Testament. And then at the end of each chapter, there are some places to, for you to take notes because once you've gone through, now I'm gonna go to Holy Thursday Mass and I, I want to remember what mm -hmm. was important to me right. or what stood out or what I want to look for. Like, yeah. do we really do that? Mm -hmm. you know, like, one of the things I talk about is the vestments. And on Thursday, the vestments are white. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, it's not Easter yet. Like, in my family, it's still Lent. You can't give every, yeah. everything mm -hmm. up, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. or get it back that you've given up. And a couple of my kids have figured out, no, 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 Lent is over on Wednesday. We get it back on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And we haven't had a priest willing to jump into that discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got yeah. the Triduum Thursday, Friday, Friday Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. So each day you take notes, and then when you actually get to those services, you can remind yourself what you learned. Right. And you can also do it during Holy Week and each day read what's coming. I will say Saturday is quite a long Mass, so you would be committed to quite, quite a long time of reading, and then mm -hmm. going back to that Mass would yeah. be... And I'm amazed at how many Catholics have not been to a Holy Saturday Mass. Right. You know, um, vigil. Um, yeah, yeah that, I, I'm a convert. It's my favorite Mass. I mm -hmm. never miss it right. um, since I came into the church. But people, I mean, you'll hear grumbling among the, the holy. <laughs> the right. holy say, oh, I'm never going to that Mass. It's just it's so, so long. It's so long. It's so but long. It's, but what an event. Right. I and mean, it's like, oh my gosh, like bring it. It's like the church 
everything that everything. she has to offer. Right. Lights and, you know, the <laughs> incense and, right. I mean, it's and spectacular. And candles and fire Yeah, and I mean, it's like, oh, and, my god. Calling down the saints, right? Isn't yes. that the best? Yes. Saints. Yes. Right. Yes, they pray, pray for us, pray so for us. So many things. People being baptized, people being confirmed. Yes, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, the entire life of the church in one night. Yes. And starting literally from the beginning. If you, if you have all of the readings, you start at the beginning, in the beginning. God created, yeah. right. and then you go to the next reading. And if you follow all of those, yeah. each one of those points to and leads yeah. to yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And you just start at the beginning, and the church takes yeah. us through in such a beautiful way yeah. so yeah. that by the time yeah. the lights are on and the bells are ringing and the Gloria yeah. is being sung and the Alleluia right. is being sung, right. you're just ready, like, come, Lord Jesus, yes. come. But, but for the less spiritual people, Mm -hmm. When you hear in the beginning, <laughs> that's the first reading. It's like that's a big Bible. That's, that's when you say maybe we should have the Protestant Bible because we're going to go through all the books right. of the Bible. Well, you get the highlights. Go, <laughs> it's just the highlights. <laughs> just the highlights. <laughs> but you know, uh, Holy Week is is like that. It is long. Mm -hmm. It's arduous. It's painful. It's it's beautiful. It's tremendous. I mean, salvation is breaking it all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I try to participate, you know, in all those services and to go go deep. But periodically, that thought does come to me. This is really long. Mm -hmm. this, this is like, I'm really tired. This is like, and then another voice comes back, you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. It's not boring, but it's, it's like, this is a real lot. And a lot of this is like, seems like a downer. And it's like, mm -hmm. wow, we're losing. And he's losing. Right, and like, right. what kind of got it? Mm -hmm. um, and it's supposed to be that way. I mean, you're walking with, you're right. journeying with. You and know, if you what, think about the fact that you're in with the apostles and with the disciples, that's the length of time. Yes. It started Thursday night, mm -hmm. and it was not over until Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that Thursday night into Friday, and then the Friday and the crucifixion, and then the waiting, and you just have to sit and wait and mm -hmm. just know, like, it, everything is gone. It's empty. He's gone. I don't see him. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. And you have to wait, and you don't expect necessarily that empty tomb. We know the end of the mm -hmm. story, so mm -hmm. we know that the empty tomb is coming. But if you're really putting yourself in the story, you sit that Friday night into Saturday right. thinking, where did he go? Right. What dismay, where did right? He go? It's like, right. oh my gosh. And how many times have we had that just in our lives? Mm -hmm. When you have tragedy, you were talking about loss and suffering in your Lent. When we have these losses yeah. and we think, where did you go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is Jesus? He's, he's left me. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't left you. There's transformation coming. When, what are the services where the tabernacles open and he's not there? Right? Did that start Thursday that's evening? Thursday. It's Friday Into when you Friday. come? Friday. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. A, and that's terrible for Catholics, mm -hmm. right? Because it's we know really he's disturbing. always in the tabernacle. Right. Mm -hmm. He's not there. It's like, right. what? But that only happens once a year. And that's that loss. That's that sadness. That's like right. something's really different here. Like, what do we, what do, we do? Right, right. And that, on Thursday, we finish that service and we go into adoration. Mm -hmm. Just as Jesus went to the garden, we go to the garden. And in my church, we go outside and, and it's very much in a wooded area. And so you really feel like you're in the garden mm -hmm. and go to adoration. And that was a really powerful experience for me as I was writing this book, because I wanted to make sure that I hadn't missed anything. So I went to every Mass saying, I have to write about this. I have to tell people taking notes, like, oh, there's incense. I didn't remember there mm -hmm. was incense. Mm -hmm. Or those yeah. white vestments. What are the white vestments? And so on Thursday, we had little children all, you know, for a long time. And so we would go to the beginning of adoration. And I was right there with Jesus in his agony. I've been in that agony mm -hmm. and praying for people who are in agony and just being with yeah. him. And then we would go home, put the children to bed. And I realized I need to come back mm. for the end of that. Mm. And when I came back after putting everybody to bed, everybody's you know all put away, and and I go back for the last half hour, it was a different place mm -hmm. mm. because his agony at the beginning was, Lord, take this cup from me, yeah. three times. But at the end, he stood up, mm. and he went forward and never looked back. And he not only stood up and said, Okay, I'll allow this cup to come. Mm -hmm. He went and met it. He said, Wake up, let mm -hmm. us go. My betrayer's at hand. Mm -hmm. And he went and met him mm -hmm. and just started that walking. He walked to that cross mm -hmm. without ever turning back. Amazing. That power was incredible. Yeah. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stand up anymore. Mm -hmm. I had, mm -hmm. I fell to my knees and I was just overwhelmed yeah. at the strength that he had to bear this cross yeah. 
and the inspiration that I had to bear mine. Right. Karen, thank you so much for beginning the process of thank walking you. through Holy Week, your, mm -hmm. your book, and we'll pick it up on Friday once again. Go to amazinggraces.com. Mm -hmm. we'll and just a quick, it's, there's yes. a Y in there, A-M-A-Y-Z-I-N-G. A-M-A-Y-Z-I-N-G, right. graces.com. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. back. Well, Father John Paul is with us today, but before we speak to him, we're going to hear the latest from Catherine Hadro, who is the beautiful host of EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. Now, Catherine, the Supreme Court is taking up a major abortion case this week. What can you tell us? Hi, Jim and Joy. Yes, the Supreme Court will consider a Louisiana law requiring abortion centers to meet the same safety standards that medical clinics in the same state must already meet. This law protects both women and the unborn in Louisiana, and the High Court will hear the case. We'll have analysis from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry. I also wanted to remind our viewers about our weekly call to action. This is a way for pro-lifers to get involved in the pro-life movement right from their very own home. To find out our latest call to action, just go to ProLifeWeekly.com. Again, you can take pro-life action by going to ProLifeWeekly.com. You can catch all of this and more on EWTM Pro-Life Weekly Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern and again on Sunday at 10 a.m. But for now, back to you at home. Thanks so much, Catherine. Plenty to pray about and to work for. Father John Paul, always great to see your face. Your thoughts? It's good to be here. Well, I have my Holy Week reading. There you go. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, I was... Uh, just found out that I'm going to be at the Sister Servants for Holy Week okay. um, Great. for the Trudewum. Uh, so that's always a blessing to be with them down the street. Yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, they're beautiful, you know, singing and, and mm -hmm. prayer there. And so um, I've been to the Holy Land um, thinking about, uh, you know, praying the mysteries of, of Jesus and his mm -hmm. life, uh, death and resurrection. I've offered Mass in the Holy Sepulchre. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is something real about that. There is something tangible about being in a place where, um, you know, he um, was instituted the Eucharist. You know, uh, being in the place uh, where he walked uh, the Via Della Rosa, mm -hmm. the Station of the Cross, um, and then Calvary. You, you walk up to Calvary, had that opportunity to actually be locked in the Holy Sepulchre overnight. Uh, so I was there from um, 7 at night until about 5, 6 in the morning. They locked the doors. Mm -hmm. So you get to see the ceremony of them locking the doors. Mm -hmm. And then a group of about 15, 20 seminarians inside praying all night long. That's Nobody powerful. else can get in. Mm -hmm. So um, that was powerful for me. Yes. You know, it makes it real. Mm -hmm. you know. The importance of places, you know, and that's so important to our Catholic faith. It's not just about our soul leaving our body and we fly away, which is a beautiful thing and a beautiful song, mm. but these places have significance. Mm. We need to remember what took place there. And God, God does that in our, in our Mass, remembers it all, right? It remembers the salvation story. The one sacrifice of Christ is remembered. Its members come back and they are there, important. Yeah. Maybe that's something I can pick up on Friday's show is the kind of fleshing out the, what it means to remember. You know, in, in Catholic theology, we use the word anamnesis, which is the word to remember is much more greater than just remembering a moment in history like a, yeah. a picture. Yeah. But um, as a priest, you know, every day I get to, Amen. you know, hold the Son of God in my hands. Mm. You know, when I say those words in my hands and you know, Jesus comes down into the cradle of my hands, you know, it's more than I can even right. imagine. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, give us a prayer and a blessing, please. Sure. 
family, may the Lord bless you and keep you this Lent. May he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. May he show you his kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. How wonderful is it to be a part of God's holy family, the family of the Trinity, the holy family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and the communion of saints and souls. God bless you and all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.